Are you trapped in the relationship yo-yo effect? You get involved with a guy and life seems fabulous. The world is magical. You're inspired. And then a few weeks, a month down the line, you've expressed how much you like him and he disappears. Or you find out he's married. Or maybe he just starts acting weird. The relationship breaks up. And now you feel like a loser. You feel like you're in the dumps. You're depressed. You're despairing and you go see your psychoanalyst. And then another month or two passes and you found the perfect guy. And you're so excited and your heart is just bursting. And you think maybe this is the one, this is the one. And then something doesn't quite work out. He gets too pushy. Maybe he gets critical. Maybe he doesn't like the same things you like and he's boring. Or maybe you're boring. And you break up again. And you go into a tailspin, down into the pits again, and back to the therapist. And this goes on over and over again. Why is love so hard? Well, to begin with, it's not your fault. Human beings are social animals. We're herd animals. We're actually wired to bond. And so the forces that Mother Nature put into these bodies are very powerful for wanting to be loved, for needing that love and attention. In fact, they have done psychological studies of children. There were children in a Romanian orphanage who were not given touch and they did not thrive. They got sick and died. But that's only part of it. They, the more recent studies have shown that if children do not get love, unconditional love and attention in the first three to five years, it actually affects the development of their brains. Now, of course, I'm sure that they were studying some of the most neglected children, but it doesn't really take much to impact your ability to find love in your as a psychosocial analyst, PhD, psychosomatic coach, I have found that there are three patterns, three general patterns with many flavors of how the baby, the human child, responds to not having enough love and ensures their survival. They are pleasing, controlling, I guess we could also call that manager, and rebel. I'm going to go through all three of them. The pleaser, oh, I know this one well because I was a pleaser. When I was, I bonded with my father and then when I was only two years old, because he was in the army, he was transferred to Japan. Now, I don't know how long we were separated, maybe a few months. It was long enough and it, for a two-year-old, it seemed like forever. It was long enough for me to lose my trust in him my trust in myself and the trust in the universe. And by that time, I had gotten pretty experienced at tamping down my emotions because my mother actually couldn't respond to me. She had two other children to take care of and she was a young mother. See, it doesn't take much. My family wasn't that complicated. They weren't that abusive. They weren't that horrible. And you know, I, I, I'm not trying to bash parents. It's hard to get it right. In fact, oftentimes our parents are reflecting the experience they had when they were growing up, their kind of love experience. Anyway, there I was, I got involved. My first husband was a perfect match for me. I had tamped down feelings and he didn't expect anything more than that. His mother was like as cold as Alaska. So we got along because he didn't have high expectations and I didn't have to fulfill it. We, we connected on a different level and it went on for a long time and then it didn't. He went through a midlife crisis and he left me for another woman. And what did I do? I hate rejection. I ran away to a spiritual community where relationships, human relationships don't matter. 
only relationship that matters is the relationship with the divine. Well, that worked pretty well. I was in an ecstatic state. I didn't care that I didn't have a relationship. I felt wonderful. But then finally, after 13 years, do you really want to wait that long? After 13 years, I met my current husband. And it became pretty apparent to me that the spiritual work, while a wonderful place to hang out, did nothing for my early childhood wounds that were on the edge of sabotaging my current relationship. So I actually did the healing I needed to do. Here's kind of the pattern in a nutshell. The pleaser tries to earn their love by figuring out what the other person wants and giving it to them, and then expects in return that they will be loved. Now, when they don't get that love back, they get pretty angry. More on this in a minute. The next pattern is the manager or controller. The, while the pleaser more comes from a life situation where there was love but not enough love, you know, little thimblefuls, the controller usually comes from a very chaotic or, or unsafe environment. Maybe there's abuse, there could be sexual abuse, there could be um, a very aggressive or very critical father, maybe a shut down mother. At any rate, the controller takes care of her needs by taking on projects. She finds men who are weak, who need her support and help, and that's how she controls them. She holds on to them, and as long as they need her, she's got them. As long as he needs her, she's got him. The problem is that if she actually heals him, if she actually succeeds in making him a strong person as opposed to a weak, dependent man, she'll probably, she may very well lose him. But if that doesn't happen, something else much worse might happen, which is that he might actually die. I have an example of this in the clients that I worked with. I had a client who had met the love of her life and they moved off to a different state. She was separated from her family and they were involved in a church group. She was a pleaser. However, her husband got involved with another woman, not sexually, intellectually. And she hated this woman and she wanted her husband to break up. And so she went from pleaser to actual controller. And she would, she would yell at him and she would scream at him and she would shut him down. The man died of a broken heart. He had a heart attack and he died. And that's what happens sometimes if there is no way out. He was committed to his wife, but he did not want to give up that woman. Now the underlying issue here so we're going back to the pleaser a minute. The underlying issue here is that the pleaser, well, and this is true of the, the manager controller, they are not being their authentic self. They hide themselves behind a facade, a behavior pattern that protects their heart. They think that that is going to give them what they want. And as children, it did for the controller or manager, it gave her a sense of safety, of control over her world. For the pleaser, hey, it works great in school. Teachers love pleasers because they are so attentive and they're so giving and they work so hard. Now the third pattern is different. In the third pattern, the child has given up trying to please the parent because it's impossible. Sometimes it's a situation where the child is associated with the loss of one of the partners or the parents. The mother dies in childbirth, for example. In another case, it could be a child who 
was sired by a man who turned out to be a total jerk and went away. And so the child always reminds the mother of that guy. And so the child, no matter what she does, she can never satisfy her parents. And so she becomes a rebel. And the rebel is, well, I can't win this, so I'm going to show that I'm unworthy anyway. And so I'm going to be in control by being a complete rebel, by being uh, counterculture, uh, getting in trouble, doing everything against the grain. And that's how they feel is like, well, you don't love me because I choose for you not to love me. And oftentimes these people get involved in social causes. And the relationships that show up are often based upon the social causes. And both of the people bond over being rebels. However, that often breaks apart too because they are not getting their needs. They, it goes counter to what they, what they really want in the relationship, which is to, to misbehave and be hated. And so that's, that really tests the relationship when you're, when you're acting out all the time. And I think that all these, these patterns show up in our, in our relationships at one time or another. I mean, aren't there times when you test the relationship to see if you're going to be loved, even if you're really bad? So how, how do you get out of this relationship yo-yo effect? Well, first of all, don't go to the internet. Those, you know, the, the match.com, they're going to match you with the perfect person for you to continue your relationship yo-yo. And the magazines, uh, the women's world, the, the little tips that tell you how, how to catch your man, how to get him excited. Well, it reminds me of the movie I recently reviewed, uh, saw again, called Fried Green Tomatoes, where this midlife crisis woman it just can't get her husband excited about her. He spends all his time watching TV. So she goes to all these self-help seminars about how to excite your husband. And one day he comes home and she is stark naked, wrapped up in saran wrap. Well, needless to say, he was not excited. He was appalled. What's interesting though, is that things got better when she actually stepped into being her authentic and true self. When she started stepping into her power, the juice got back in the relationship. So how do you get back into your authentic power? Let me tell you, these patterns are pretty persistent because you've had them for a long time and they have worked. And when you try and go against them, it triggers a fear response, which gets that pattern activated. I recommend that you get help. When I was working on my problem, I most certainly got help. If you would like some help, reach out, have a introductory phone conversation with me. Click on the link in the comment section or send me a message. When you try to do this yourself, you are listening to the little inner girl, the inner child who was wounded so long ago. And she is not going to direct you in the right direction. She is going to circle you back, back to that yo-yo effect. And if you keep on attracting the same kind of guys, that is a sign that you need to do something about your pattern that you are caught in the yo-yo effect. I hope you enjoyed this today. Enjoy the holidays and be brilliant. Bye for now.